Well, this is a really exciting time. I don't know about you, but I remember taking time off from work, studying for weeks upon weeks, going to a testing center, paying hundreds of dollars, only to come back at the end of the day wondering, did I pass? Did I get that question right? All that's changing, and we're really excited to tell you how. So just a little bit of philosophy in the past versus now. So formerly, it was a cognitive exam every 10 years. It was similar to your initial recertification exam. It was high stakes. You went to a testing center. You're worried about passing. Some people's jobs were dependent upon it. And it was really a knowledge-based uh, exam uh, similar to the initial certification exam. We tended to use the high-performing questions, ones that really did well, and that's how we did the recertification. So we're getting rid of that. We're crumbling up, throwing it away, because in the past, our, the board, such as ours, had a gatekeeping role. Uh, the rationale is we were there to protect the public so that they would know who is qualified to perform echocardiography and who is not. Uh, but diplomats, myself included, felt this was burdensome, that it was costly, and, and really irrelevant to current practice. If you think about not studying about something for 10 years, you can see how you're not going to be current. And it really supported binge and purge learning. You learned a lot about a lot of things right before the exam, and maybe a month or two you forgot about it. So there's really no ongoing continuous education. So we're changing all that. Our new philosophy, there should be an ongoing assessment. You should know right away whether you answered a question right or wrong. And we want a relationship with you. Uh, we want a continuous relationship. We want new, new things to come out. We want to throw them out at you so that you can try to understand and learn them and ultimately help your patients. So we really want to keep everybody current, not you know every 10 years or so, uh, over the course of your whole career. So what's the difference between initial certification and maintenance of certification? So the initial certification still has that role to protect the public. And it's a high hurdle that I'm sure many of you in this room have already passed. So you study, they're difficult questions, you have to turn in lo uh, logs, many times you have to do a fellowship, so it's a really high bar. But we feel once you jump that bar, then we wanna just maintain it and support you throughout the rest of your career. So how are we going to do that? Well, this is a new time. We're going to have an interactive tool uh, that's going to, both for customers and diplomats, it's going to be relevant information. So our questions will be you know, uh, uploaded on a continual basis and refreshed. And so you'll get immediate feedback on whether you know something or not. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on the way to the airport when you're sitting around waiting for anything, waiting for a doctor's appointment. You can do it anywhere that you have an internet connection, anytime, on any device. It could be, like I said, a phone, both, both Android as well as uh, Apple. Uh, it, you can do it on an iPad. You can do it on your computer. If you like that testing center environment, you can go to a room and sit in front of a computer and still answer those questions. So we feel by being current and giving you these questions every three months that you'll maintain your currency and really improve patient care over in real time. So we're going to unveil it today, and this is what it's going to look like. So this is what it would look like on your phone. You'll have a dashboard telling you how many questions you've completed. So in this example, you've finished your first quarter already. You have 12 more questions to answer this quarter. You're going to get 12 questions per quarter to answer. Uh, we encourage you to answer them quarterly. And you can answer five in one day, 10 in one day, one in a day, whatever suits your, your busy work and lifestyle. We'll have an ongoing percentage of uh, questions right. And it's, it's a method called MDT, which we'll explain in a little bit. But basically, that's your dashboard screen, so you see what they are. And if you've maybe been a little lazy and you want to answer all the questions in December, you can do that as well. But we encourage you to stay current. So you hit the Start button, and you get a question such as this. And we're going to have three answers for you. Not four, but three. And statistically, it shows that if you have a choice of three versus four, it makes no difference at all. So you'll read the question, and you look at the answers. 
and you'll, be a, you'll have a countdown. So you don't have all day. You don't have time to go look these questions, the answers up in a book. We don't want you to do that. We're testing walking around knowledge. So the things that you, knew, you need to know in your daily practice, that's what you'll be tested on. But we have a limit of 180 seconds. Should be plenty of time. Some of these will be video, so you'll need a, maybe a little more time to review them. But we decided just to make it three minutes for all of your questions. So you hit submit. And when you hit submit, what happens is you know immediately. Well, actually, let me back up. So we asked you two more questions. The first is, how confident are that you answered that question correctly? The next thing we ask you is how relevant this is to your practice. Now, the reason we ask you this is because if you answer a question wrong and you're very confident that you're right and it's very relevant to your practice, we're going to give you that question back. So it'll show that you know, you've learned over time. We're going to get that same question back, and hopefully you get it right the next time. If you're not confident, that's less, you know, it's, it's a less of an issue. And if it's not relevant to your practice, that's less of an issue too. So that's why we're asking those two additional questions. And then once you answer those two, you hit submit, and you know right away that you've answered that question correctly or not. Now, if you've answered it correctly or not correctly, you'll have a chance to look up some references. The links will be right there for you. Some of those questions will have ASE guidelines. You can click right there, learn a little bit more about that question. Maybe you weren't sure about it, or maybe you got it wrong. Well, you'll learn about that and hopefully answer it right the next time. And we'll have a little explanation. If you don't have time to read you know, whatever article is linked to that, we'll give you a little, just get that key point so you learn the concept that you potentially missed. And then you go on to answer a next question. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. I mentioned it will have video as well. So the questions won't be this easy, but just to give you an example of being able to see video in real time. Again, these will be three minutes to answer. You'll pick the, what you think is the right answer. Hopefully everybody in this audience knows the answer. But you can also flip it on your phone. If it's a little hard to see or a little subtle finding on Echo, you can flip it to make the picture bigger. And like I said, you can also answer it on your computer. So how will this be rolled out? Well, annually you'll enroll by the beginning of the year. Uh, you have until the end of November to roll out because, as I mentioned, you know, you may answer all the questions right in December, but we want you to enroll early so you answer them quarterly. Uh, Twelve questions will be released in January, April, July, and October, and you answer all those questions by December 31st. If you don't answer a question or if you didn't get to all of them, it'll be treated as an incorrect. We're using a new method of assessing how well you're doing called measurement decision theory. And we've set a value of 0.2. And what that means is there's a 20% chance that you know the material that you're answering. We could have set it a lot higher to get an 80% chance that you know it, but we set a really low bar so that you maintain, you continue to be involved, and can continue to learn. And hopefully you see your MDT rise over time. At the end of the year, probably in January, we'll, we'll uh, indicate your status on the NBE website as, as far as uh, whether you're following, uh, maintaining your certification. So who's eligible? Anybody that's passed an exam at any time is eligible to enter this maintenance certification ECHO. Now, some of you are in that 10-year recertification period. And for you, you can do this for free, no charge at all. We've committed to you that we, you have a 10-year designation for your certification or recertification. We're going to honor that to you. We'd welcome you to participate in Mochi. You don't have to, but it's free if you do. We hope you'll have fun doing this and participate anyway. And then there's a group of people who passed more than 10 years ago who have not been maintaining their certification. Maybe they recertified once. Maybe they didn't recertify at all. We want you back. We want you to be a part and engaged and continuously learn and improve. 
We call this the amnesty group, thanks to my colleague, Dr. Labovitz, who coined the phrase. But this is anybody who's passed the exam at any time. Now, there's a three-year window. This isn't going to be open forever. But until December 31st, 2027, uh, if you've passed it you know, beyond your 10 years, you can come back and rejoin. So every January, we're going to ask you some really basic and simple questions. Do you have an unrestricted license to practice medicine? Do you still do echo in your practice? Yes or no? Um, we want to know about how many you're doing, but there's no requirement. We just kind of have, want to feel for how many you're doing every year. You should continuously learn by getting some CME, and, but you don't have to do it every year. You just need 15 credits over a three-year rolling period. Could be 15 in one year, could be five, five, and five, whatever suits, whatever works out. We'd like to know that you're improving your own quality of echo. It's, it's a very, very low bar as well, and it's $85 a year. So very low fee to do that. A um, couple cups of coffee um, every month will we'll pay for that exam. We're going to launch it next month in July of 2024. And for everybody, whether you're beyond your 10 years or not, there is no fee. Try it out. Have some fun. For the next six months, you can do it for free. Uh, so the official pay period for those who are beyond the 10 years will start in January of 2025. So we'll have status on the website listed. you either be active, which means you're participating in MOCHI, which is Maintenance Certification Echo, or MOTI, Maintenance of Your Testimer Status. Whatever you did, whatever your status is, that's what you'll be maintaining. And, um, and so if you're active within 10 years or you're participating in Mochi and Moti, you're active. Conditional, maybe you're not fulfilling all those requirements. Maybe your MDT score is below 20. Um, then you are conditional. You'll have a year to turn it around. And if you haven't you know, changed things in that following grace period, then you go to becoming inactive. So you'll be able to search your name and print out your certificate. You just plug your name in there, and then you'll be able to see and print your certificate indicating your status is active, conditional, or inactive.